as many of you know, one of the primary problems we were running into when we went out to work with gated horses of all styles and types was that uh, the saddles weren't fitting. And uh, we have uh, customers who have literally been through a dozen or more saddles trying to find one that fits their gated horse. As we were working with the horses, we started uh, analyzing this and figuring out why this was true, why saddle fit was so imperative for the horse, not just their comfort, but their gait. What we discovered is that many horses, like Kelby here, have what I call a rafter or A-shaped framed spine. Their back is actually shaped like this. Most Western saddles are made for the barrel-shaped horse, the round-shaped horse. When you put a round-shaped tree on a rafter-shaped horse, what happens is that the, the tree bars, which are th these two panels here, and this is actually what you're riding when you ride in your saddle, the tree bars sit like, like this, and the weight is only distributed on the outside edge of the bars. There's no weight being distributed on the inside edge of the bars, but only on the outside. This creates pressure points. Aside from that, our bareback riding demonstration in a few minutes is going to reveal that the gated horse, all horses, but particularly the gated horse, needs to have an unusual degree of flexibility and freedom through the croup, back, shoulders, neck, and pole. Uh, they, they take independent steps. Every leg moves independently of every other leg, and that requires a tremendous amount of flexibility. We say that such horses are quadridextrous. So what we've done is We've gone to the Steel Saddle Tree Company and they've helped us because we have, we have some design ideas of our own besides uh, getting the, the shape of the tree proper, the angles of the bars proper. Um, we designed a tree that has flexibility built right into it. Not too much, but just enough that when the horse moves, the tree will move with him uh, and flex with him so that he's not restricted with essentially a wooden splint in the middle of his back, which is what you have when you put a wooden treed saddle uh, on the back of your horse. We designed it so that it sits forward over the wither and shoulder. You'll see how much freedom there is right here. We don't want any restriction here in the shoulder area. We want this horse, gated horses have more lift and or reach in their front end which means that their scapula rotates back significantly more than a non-gated horse's with every stride. Well, we wanted this to be totally non-restrictive here, but to sit nice and evenly all across the rest of the back. We also build some super core in, so this actually sits significantly higher than what you see with the bare tree. But this gives you the idea of how we want the tree to fit. We don't want it digging in here. We want nice, even contact all along here and little or no contact up here so that the shoulder can move freely. Now, there are some wooden treed gated horse saddles on the market. And the trees in those saddles look like this. The trees are designed to sit on the horse like this, the idea being that with a flared front bar, front edge of the bar, the horse is able to rotate its shoulder back and it will get underneath there. Well, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. But as you can see, the A shape of the horse's frame is not taken into consideration. Their only real weight bearing area is right here in the center of the bars. So the weight is carried in the one spot. Also, because this sets farther back than our saddle does, the rider's weight is borne right in here. This is the weakest part of the horse's back, just before the loins. You put the weight here, and you have very little weight distribution, and what you're going to have is a horse that learns to go hollow to avoid uh, painful contact with the wooden saddle tree. So we've come up with a number of solutions, and we wanted you to have an idea why that was so. Now, on occasion, we'll have folks ask, why, if it's important to put the saddle farther forward, like we do with our saddle, why can't they just take their regular saddle and set it more forward to put the rider in the position we'd like to see them riding in? Well, I'm going to just show you why. 
This is why. When the weight comes on the saddle, it's going to dig in right here severely. There's almost no contact through here at all. All of the contact is right here and there's none up here. The saddle tree is not designed to sit forward and you can't simply make that kind of adjustment. Um, you have to actually redesign the saddle to, to be made to put the rider in the more forward position. I know a number of you are going to want to know more about the IMAS 4 beat saddle and we didn't want to place it on our video series directly because uh, the series wasn't about selling product but it was about educating our viewers. However, we'd like to also take the opportunity to educate our viewers about the features of the IMAS 4 beat saddle and if we don't put it on a DVD then we're going to be overwhelmed with emails and telephone calls. So we thought we'd do this so that you folks could find out all about the IMAS 4 beat saddle. Probably the, the question we get asked most frequently is why do we have three-point rigging and how does it work? What are the advantages of it? Three-point rigging is when you have one cinch, one latigo that goes from the rear to the front rigging back down to the cinch and ties off at the back. By the way, this is rigged both sides exactly the same way. Now we have the front rigging it's called three-quarter fired as opposed to seven-eighths fired. What that means is it comes quite a bit farther back than your standard or typical type saddle rigging. The reason we've done this is because we want to keep this cinch behind, the, farther back on the barrel and be, farther back behind the elbow because the most active point of the horse's barrel is right there behind the elbow, especially for gated horses. They have more lift or reach there. So if you put a cinch right there, chances are sometime in a horse's life you're going to get a saddle gall. Now the reason we have put uh, a, the rigging, a three-point rigging like this is because we want to hold both the front and the back end of that saddle down. If you hold only the front end of the saddle down then as the horse moves and it has that active motion behind then what happens is the back end of the saddle just keeps flopping up with every, with every step that the horse takes and you can end up having soreness in the back and particularly right behind the wither. So uh, since most people don't use rear riggings in a way where they actually contact the horse, we, we actually have one latigo, one cinch, and we rig it from front to back, and that way the saddle's held down from front to back, and, and there's a lot more stability there, but we still only have to have one cinch. We start the rigging in the back rather than in the front for a couple of reasons. Uh, the most important reason being for safety. If we start it in the front and come down to the cinch, go back to the back and come down and then tie off in the back, then we've only got a single layer of uh, leather coming down from that front uh, rigging. And if there's ever an accident or the leather gets old and breaks, you haven't got any kind, anything else there to hold it in place. This way you've got a couple different, you're coming back and forth a couple different times off of both of them, so you're a little bit safer. Um, we tie off in the back because we want to keep all that extra uh, knotting out from under the rider's leg, and that's a good way to do it. This happens to be our standard tree, and as you see, the angles of the bars underneath do reflect, they do reflect a little bit more uh, uh, angle because gated horses, 80 or 85 percent of gated horses are more A-framed than uh, western or stock type horses. The other feature of the saddle tree that's really important are the flexible tree bars. Amanda's going to show you how the tree does flex. It flexes just enough that it will allow the saddle to move in unison with the horse's back so that the horse is not being held stiff and rigid under a wooden, non-flexible saddle tree, but that under the rider's weight, that tree will give ever so slightly to the action of the horse's back and really, really help him to be a lot more comfortable than he would be otherwise. Something that we can't show right here right now, but that is equally important to the flexible tree, is that under the saddle tree, along both edges, uh, both bars, we completely line that with a product called Supercore Therapeutic Padding. 
Now, Supercore entered the market as a therapeutic padding for patients who are comatose or bedridden, and it prevents pressure soreness on those kinds of fragile um, patients. Uh, it has a, a tremendous amount of resiliency, and it completely eliminates the possibility of pressure soreness, uh, assuming that the saddle is a reasonably good fit. As we were uh, designing this saddle, we realized it wasn't good enough for the saddle to be only comfortable for the horse. It needed to be equally comfortable for the rider, because if a rider is not comfortable, they're stiff, and if a rider is stiff, the horse is going to go stiff. So we instituted a couple of different design features. One that I'm particularly proud of is that we also put the Supercore therapeutic padding into the seat of the saddle. Now this is a really expensive material, but we find that people who ride it talk about it riding like a cloud. And we think that it's worth every dime that we spend uh, to put that kind of material in the seat. There isn't another product on the market that even comes close. The other really important feature is that we have um, arranged so that the stirrups hang a little farther forward than what is traditional. This allows the rider to be seated in a position that's very much like a bareback rider's position, whereby their heel is slightly ahead of the position of their hip. It's also a very flexible and free swinging stirrup so that the, whatever way the rider is comfortable riding, that stirrup can accommodate it. But what we really, really have found is that riders who ride in the saddle, because of the position of the stirrup, uh, can ride for hours and hours without having the stress on their uh, hips, ankles, and knees that uh, is usually found with riders who ride with stirrups that are set far back right under the rider's seat. As we show with our bareback riding demonstration in clinics and, and through this video series, we've discovered that most riders who ride bareback and don't depend on their saddle uh, stirrups or cantle or horn or the reins for balance tend to ride directly behind the horse's wither. That's where they like to be seated. That's the true center of gravity on the horse. Well, most uh, saddle designs are, are made such that the saddle is actually placed so that the front edge of the tree bar is behind the horse's wither. Now, the thinking there is that that allows the shoulder to move freely. Unfortunately, the secondary effect of that is that while the shoulder may or may not roll freely, um, actually, what generally happens is that this, as the shoulder or scapula rolls back with a stride, it actually hits that tree bar at, because of the, the positioning. But the other unfortunate effect of having that set back like that is that the rider's weight is carried farther back on the horse's back. That's not the horse's center of gravity, and in fact, it's the weakest part of the horse's back and can contribute to a, a tremendous amount of pain and discomfort for the horse. And eventually, often, it contributes to the horse becoming somewhat sway-backed. This is how the saddle tree looks on the horse without all the accoutrements of the leather and the fleece and all the things that go on top of a saddle tree. Uh, the reason we uh, want to show this is we want to show that, first of all, we are not showing it with a therapeutic padding, which would lift that, lift that tree up off the back considerably more, but the bare tree on the horse, how the weight is distributed evenly along the bars on both sides without any kind of interference or pressing into the loins. However, we place that saddle far forward, so we've designed it with a tremendous amount of flare at the front edge of the bar, of the front edge of the tree bar, so that that horse's shoulder really can rotate freely without any interference. So there the rider is sitting in the position that's most akin to bareback riding and on the horse's center of gravity. The shoulder is able to move with complete freedom under, under the saddle tree and their weight is distributed along the whole edge of the saddle tree on both sides of the spine. Here we have Amanda Parsons riding the big horse Bell that I introduced you to earlier. Uh, Bell is a very standard uh, Tennessee walking horse, uh, and like most Tennessee walking horses, if you watch her move without a saddle, you're going to see that there is a remarkable amount of action that comes up from her hind end all the way up through her back. So even though the, set, the gait is really comfortable for the rider, uh, there is still a lot of action going on under the rider's seat, back and forth, rather than up and down or, or side to side but the action comes from, from the croup 
loin up through the back, neck and shoulders. Now another thing I want you to notice, Amanda's riding this horse bareback in a position that is very, very typical for bareback riding. In fact, I've never seen a person riding bareback who naturally assumes the position that is called balanced or centered riding or correct equitation seat. And that is uh, the, the seat that is taught whereby the rider has their, their ears, shoulders, spine, and heels all in alignment. Instead, a bareback rider tends to ride with their heels drifted slightly forward of their seat. Their upper body generally falls slightly behind the vertical. They position themselves immediately behind the wither. That's the sweet spot. That's the center of gravity for the horse. The only way that you can ride a horse bareback comfortably and safely is to assume this kind of a position, and natural riders who do ride bareback will always prefer it. This is the position, no matter how they've been trained um, formally in a saddle, this is the position they'll take when they're riding bareback and they don't have the saddle to depend upon for balance. They have to ride like this to maintain good balance. Now, if we ask Amanda, and we're going to here, to assume the correct equitation seat, which she knows very well, she's going to be moving three or four inches farther back because that's where this typical saddle actually places the rider, right in the weak point. You see how Belle suddenly doesn't want to move? Um, over, and, and you see how Amanda doesn't stay very well balanced. She hasn't got the stirrups or the cantle or the reins to really depend upon for balance, and so it's very difficult for her to balance back in the position where she'd be sitting in a saddle if, in fact, she were in a, a typical saddle. You'll see how her whole body, her upper body is now thrown forward as she works to maintain what is called the correct heel position with her heels in alignment with her hips. Uh, that throws her upper body forward. It stiffens her up, throws her off balance, stiffens the horse up, and throws the horse off balance. And this is the reason why we've designed uh, our saddle so that it's situated farther forward and places the rider in a, in a position that really is identical with the position that a rider naturally takes when riding bareback. Now, if you would you feel comfortable, Amanda, going a little faster like that? I'm not asking to you, I'm just asking you if you would feel comfortable. No. <laughs> okay, you see how the horse wants to keep halting and stopping. She doesn't want to, to move out. Now, if Amanda puts herself back in the position where she's comfortable, you'll see that horse is going to become much more willing and comfortable herself. She'll move right on out and you'll get that nice, nice rolling action again through the back. And that's why we say that um, you don't pay a whole lot of attention to what's considered proper or traditional as regard uh, your, your seat, your equitation. You want to sit in a position that's most comfortable for you. We actually call this liberty equitation because it gives the rider the liberty to ride in a manner that's comfortable and functional for themselves and the horse. Now we have Amanda riding Bell in the Imus 4 Beat saddle. We just wanted to show how but this saddle really does put you in the same position that you tend to take naturally when you ride the horse bareback. You'll notice as Amanda comes around that her heels are slightly forward of her hip and her upper body is slightly behind the vertical. And she, her seat is positioned just a little ways behind the wither, so she's in the sweet spot. Now I'm betting that she could, drop, if you drop your stirrups, let's see where those, we have the stirrups so that they fall exactly where the rider's foot wants to fall if she were riding without the support of stirrups. And that's the ideal, is to not count on your stirrups for support, but merely to have them there for a little extra stability. Now, if Amanda were to want to pick her stirrups up again, she wouldn't have any problem doing so because the stirrup's right where her leg wants to fall.